my name is Haley Lassia, and this is my quarter four careers presentation. The career that I've chosen to present on is an orthopedic surgeon, so here it is. So an orthopedic surgeon by Haley Lassia. The beneficial skills um, of an orthopedic surgeon are good hand-eye coordination, steady and careful hands, the ability to make effective and quick decisions, good communication skills, courage, being kind and empathetic toward your patients, having leadership, the ability to see the internal features of the body without getting sick, and the ability to work well under pressure and stay calm in demanding situations such as surgery. So to the right, you will see a picture that shows the top 10 management skills that you need for any job, and I'll just give you a minute to read those. Next is the education and training needed. The first step is to complete at least your standard four years of college to earn your bachelor's degree. This is to prepare you for the medical college admissions test or the MCAT. Um, after passing that, you will need to complete your four years of medical school. The first two are spent in classrooms and labs, and the second two are spent basically learning in a real clinic or hospital. After completing medical school, you'll need to pass the U.S. Medical Licensing Examination, which is a three-part test that, that makes sure that doctors know all the necessary info to treat their patients. Once you've passed the exam, you'll need to complete your five years of orthopedic surgery residency. This is basically when you spend four years um, training under and practicing under a real orthopedic surgeon, a certified and experienced orthopedic surgeon basically apprenticing under them for four years. And then your final year, you'll need to spend, again, apprenticing under an experienced doctor, but in some other field like pediatric medicine, general surgery, or surgery in some other area like br the brain or the heart. Then to be certified by the American Board of Orthopedic Surgery, you have to complete your orthopedic surgery residency, practice for two years in the field, and pass um, certain exams. Finally, the last optional part is to take extra classes that, uh, that teach um, how to specialize in the surgery of areas of the body, of other areas of the body, like the hand, ankle, foot, shoulder, and more. And I'll just give you a, a minute to look at the picture that I put on there. Next is the career path. First, um, as we said before, you are a student in college, then you are a student in medical school, then you um, have to complete your orthopedic surgery residency, and after that you can become a general orthopedic surgeon. After that, if you wish to get more training and take those optional classes, like I said before, you can become an orthopedic specialist in one area. If you keep taking those classes and learning and getting more experience, you can become an orthopedic specialist in many areas. And then you can become, with more experience, you can become the head orthopedic surgeon at your clinic or hospital, which means that you are the most experienced doctor, you specialize in the most areas, and you're leading all the other surgeons, basically. Next is the job outlook. The U.S. Bureau of Labor Statistics predicted a 7% growth for all physicians and surgeons from 2018 to 2028, as shown in the graph at the right. This is faster than the average for all other occupations, which as shown is 5%. This is also especially because of the rural areas of the US where there's a low ratio of physicians and doctors to the population. And this is also because of the growing and aging population because as the older population grows, the rates of chronic illnesses and other medical problems increase, and people always want to, and people will always seek the higher levels of care, and yeah, they use the latest technologies and practices. And then I'll give you a minute to look at the graph at the right.
Next is the salary range. The average salary of an orthopedic surgeon is $485,930 per year, but the range typically falls between $382,050 and $628,680. Salary ranges can vary depending on different factors such as the education you receive, your certifications, additional skills like specializing in certain areas, and the, your experience, like the number of years you spent in your practice. In addition, your the location or area you practice in might also affect your salary due to low, like lower income communities, higher income communities, or if for some reason people in your community are at a higher risk of sustaining injuries that would cause for cause a need for orthopedic surgery. And you can look at the graph for a minute. Next are your duties and what you have to do in that job. To sum it all up, orthopedic surgeons examine, diagnose, and treat diseases and injuries in the musculoskeletal system with surgery and corrective medical devices. So they work with and take care of your bones, joints, ligaments, tendons, muscles, and nerves. Basically everything that allows you to move, work, and be active. So they perform surgeries to correct any injuries or problems you may have from these body parts. For example, if you fracture your arm, um, an orthopedic surgeon might have to treat you. If you tear your ACL, you also might need to get um, some treatment from an orthopedic surgeon. One, um, I guess, kind of misunderstood concept is people think that orthopedic surgeons only treat bones. While that is one main thing that they treat, they also treat joints, ligaments, muscles, tendons, and more. And then you can just take a minute to look at the picture. Next is the best location. So these are the top 15 places for orthopedic surgeons to work. And these they are the top um, 15 because of the number of surgeons employed there, the salary of the surgeons there, the quality of the facilities, the number of patients treated, and, and more. There's also a picture of some orthopedic surgeons pre um, performing on a patient, and then there is this list that says the um, highest paying cities and just overall best places for an orthopedic surgeon to work. And it says their hourly wage as well. Um, you can look at that for a minute. Next are the Professional Orth Orthopedic Surgery Associations. So these professional associations can provide, provide a good way for orthopedic surgeons to learn and specialize in certain areas and can also just give them more experience. Also working for them can put an orthopedic surgeon in a higher and better position than they might have been not working in one of these professional associations. So individual states and regions have their own professional orthopedic surgeon, orthopedic associations, but these are just some of the best and most common in the USA. The, so there is the American Academy of Orthopedic Surgery, the AALS. There is the American Association of Orthopedic Executives, the AAOE. The North American Spine Association, the NASS. The American Orthopedic Society for Sports Medicine, the AOSSM, the American Association of Hip and Knee Surgeons, the AAHKS, and there are other state and regional associations. I've linked these associations in the presentation 
So if I was to click on one, then you could go to their website and learn more about them, but we're not, um, we don't really have time to do that now. And then on the side, there is a picture that just shows some of the, lo some of the logos of these professional associations. Next are the similar careers. So other career, careers that are similar to this are really just other surgeons, like general surgeons that can work on any part of the body, heart surgeons, aka cardiothoracic surgeons, neurosurgeons, pediatric surgeons, transplant surgeons, and surgeons that specialize in one part of the body. Other similar careers are other people in the medical industry, like nurses, um, doctors of different um, skills and I guess practices, physical thera therapists, pediatricians, paramedics, and other health industry workers. And then on the right, there is a picture of some surgeons performing on a patient. Finally, there is the interesting fact. So orthopedics um, started with children. Um, the first form of orthopedic medicine focused on treating children who were born with spine, limb, and other bone-related um, problems. Next, um, the most common areas of the body that orthopedic doctors have to treat are the knees and the shoulders. This is surprising because they treat almost every, uh, almost every other part of the body. Um, next is that orthopedic surgeons aren't required to choose one part of the body to specialize in. Some doctors can choose to specialize in one or a few parts of the body to gain a lot of expertise in those, while others can prefer to treat like a wide range of injuries from many parts of the body. And finally is that most people assume that orthopedics treatment is only through surgery, but there are many non-surgical options of treatment too. And then on the side, there is an image telling these bone health tips from orthopedic surgeons for the new year. And you can look at that, but just a summary of it is to stay active and keep your bones strong with activities that really take a toll on your body and I guess make your body work, like that kind of be, that can bear a weight on your body, like sports, running, and exercising with weights. And then getting enough vitamin D because vitamin D is essential for bone growth and for your muscles and bones to be strong. And finally, just to reduce your risk of fractures caused by falls, by fall proofing your home, like picking up things and not leaving things all over the ground where people can fall and trip over them, and even securing loose rugs. And then that's it. That's all, that is all of my presentation. And um, I hope I taught you something about orthopedic surgeons.